It's time for the Nebraska Baseball Coaches Show. The hitter now, the 1 0 pitch. Swings and lines one. Diving grab by Dylan Carey deep in the hole. Holy cow, what a play from DC. Dice comes set, the 0 2 pitch. Strike three called outside corner, and Casey Dice able to work around the one out walk and hangs the zero in the top of the eighth inning. He's throwing. Here's the 2 1. That's drilled to left field. That's hit well. Isaac Kadena going back, looking up, and it's gone. Dylan Carey has tied the game with a two run blast to left field. The sophomore left hander comes set. The 0 2 pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. No shot for Ross, an inning over. And Jalen Worthley. Nails down the quality save for Mason McConaughey, and the Buckeyes leap two in the top of the seventh. And now the pitch. Swing and a miss. Climb the ladder with a fastball. 95 on the gun from Sears. Strikeout number 10. Now with Will Bolt. Here's your host, Greg Sharp. And welcome to our baseball show for the week. The Cornhuskers coming off of a weekend series victory over the Ohio State Buckeyes. And now we'll get ready to play the Jayhawks of Kansas tomorrow night down in Lawrence. You want to be a part of the program, 402-413-2400 with a call or a text. Congratulations. I know if you don't win the Sunday game, there's a little bitter taste about the weekend, but winning series is kind of what it's about. It is, yeah. you gotta, you got to win series to have a chance to win the league and do what you want to do. And, yeah, you, you want to finish it off. It's always... You know, if you win Sunday to win the series, you got a whole different feeling going in the week. But a series wins, a series win, and uh, we took care of business on Friday and Saturday. How about your starting pitching Friday and Saturday? And, and kudos to to Brett Sears, finally honored yeah. by the league. Yeah, congrats to Brett. I mean, how dominant I mean he was on Friday. Just first batter of the game gets a two strike dribbler down the first base line, and only one other hit after that. And had faced the minimum or one above the minimum going to the ninth. Yeah. It was no just, walks. What a what a dominant performance against a, you know their their very left-handed lineup you know so he had to have the changeup going um, and boy did he ever really mixed it well you didn't have to go in the bullpen there and then Mason McConaughey you bumped him to Saturday and he did a heck of a job taking it deep into the game he did he got us deep into the game and then Worthley came out and and really you know looked strong like he has been he's been very very consistent for us but yeah we, so we we're hoping to get out of Mason and. You know, you go into Sunday's game only having used three pitchers. Um, you know, we had, we had set ourselves up really well. How would you feel like Will Walsh threw mm -hmm. yesterday? Because he, he wasn't maybe as sharp at Creighton mm -hmm. Tuesday, but it seemed like he kind of found himself. He did, and I would have liked to have seen him come out of the pen a little sharper right out of the shoot because it ended up, you know, we had a wild pitch in there. I had a walk right away, um, you know, and they gave the two-run single, single there. But And then after that, it was great. So he stabilized it and gave us a, a great opportunity uh, to get back in that ball game. Um, so, yeah, he did a nice job there. Um, and, you know, he, he is a good bounce back for him from Tuesday. It, is, does he have a preferred role or is he just kind of willing to, whatever you need me, coach, I'll do? Yeah, I think he's willing to do whatever. I think he probably sees himself as a starter, um, you know, and as a reliever. You know, we've got to pick our spots, right? Like, what's the best scenario to bring him in? If he's a preferred starter or if he's a guy that is more comfortable starting, then, you know, do you bring him in in a clean inning versus having to come out of the stretch? You know, we brought him in in that situation at Northwestern, and he got a big strikeout for us with the bases loaded. Um, you know, so it obviously didn't go as well this week uh, when he first got in there. So we, we just got to pick our spots there. He's going to be willing to do whatever. He just wants to win. Um, you know, he's been at it for a long time here, and, you know, with, um, you know, some ups and downs with the injuries and those type of things. So he just – he just wants to do what it takes to, to help the team. Um, but, you know, whether it's starting or leaving, we're always going to make the decisions on what's the best best thing for the team. And, and uh, we'll kind of see what that looks like moving Be forward. Because getting ready for a start is different than getting hot quickly for a relief appearance, right? right? It is. It is. And he, he knew. I mean, we were – he got moving around a little bit on Saturday. And, and he didn't get hot or anything. So – he knew that he was going to be the first guy out of the pen, so it's not like it, it caught him by surprise. Um, and and all, with all those left-handed hitters, he knew he was going to have to have the breaking ball going. But he had the changeup going as well, and that, that's an effective pitch for him versus rights or lefts. Yeah. All right, how about the offense for the week? It seems like even going back to the Northwestern series that you have scored in bunches. Right. Maybe not so many covering five or six of the innings, but big innings, which yeah. we love those. Those are cool. We do, and there it becomes contagious at times where guys kind of feed off each other. Um, I would prefer – I love the beginning. I would prefer to have constant pressure throughout the, the game. Um, in order to do that, we've got to have 
you know, some guys got to get get going a little bit. We've had some guys going through a little bit of some skids and, um, you know, switch the lineup up a little bit at times. But, um, you know, it, it, that's why pitching and defense is always going to be king because, if you know, the hitting always comes and goes. It, it just it just does. It's very cyclical that way. Um, but, yeah, offensively, I, I wasn't um, real thrilled with, with how it went. And we averaged four four runs a game in four games last week. And, um, and we go two and two, you know. So, again, that just shows that, you know, if you have good pitching and, and, and we have played better defense as well. Um, so, um, you know, I guess in particular it's the timely hitting, you know, as well. Uh, we had one, uh, one hit with runner scoring position on Tuesday, one on Friday, and one on Sunday, you know. So that, that's tough sledding when you go one for 11 or 13 or 14 uh, with runners in scoring position. Need to see us be a lot more aggressive um, in those situations. Felt like we got really passive this week um, in those particular spots. Um, and just overall just showing more grit uh, in the box at times. All right, the techs are flying in. Dr. Jay and Carney says, please ask the coach about the umpire exclamation explanation at the top of the third Sunday when the Ohio State kid forgot the count. Did they not start the clock on him? Okay, so I'll, I'll kind of walk you through that the be, as best I can here um, and staying impartial. Um, so <laughs> the rule has, in fact, it, it's changed, I think, three different times since we started with the pitch clock. Initially, it was hard and fast rule that you had to be ready in 10 seconds regardless. So if you didn't know the count, if you, you know, hit a foul ball, whatever, that you had, you had 10 seconds. Now they have amended the rule to give the leeway to some to the hitter if he does mess up the count like what happened I wondered Sunday however in that particular situation I still feel like he, there was excessive time that had 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 taken place uh, because the clock didn't start again until about 10 seconds when he got down the line and then he did not get back in the box and alert until there were three seconds left on the clock so there's there's still some interpretation there. Yes, you're going to give him more time, but he also, I think at the very least, they probably should have had to take an offensive timeout to not get the strike three called. So uh, that's just the way I saw it. Um, and, and the rule has been amended instead of just having a hard and fast rule that they can give the benefit of the doubt to the hitter or something like that happens. Very good. I, we, we kind of, that's kind of how Ben and I treated it, that it needed to be an either or. Either it's a strike, which we would have been out, or a timeout. Something right. had to be, and then they just yeah. they didn't do anything. Okay, well put, and I think you, you're safe from getting fined. Uh, Nico from Colorado says, Coach, I love the post-game team pictures. Why is Coach Childress hardly <laughs> in them? Come on, Rob. P.S. Bring back the gray sleeveless jerseys. I think he's brought that to us yeah. before. Is that Nico? Is that who Nico, sent that yeah. text? Oh, yeah. Um, Coach Childress is, I think he's he's been in the benchmark photos so he was in he was in the photo for my hundredth win I think he was in the photo for our 10th win and our 20th win uh, okay so he I think he's picks and chooses he picks and chooses the ones that uh <laughs> that he gets in there and on and um yeah we'll have to see about those gray sleeveless jerseys I, I you know how long ago did we wear those it was uh, about 20 years ago I so I think say. I think there might be somebody out there that has my old number seven sleeveless jersey it might be Nico I don't know could be yeah so yeah, I, it's, I I don't remember seeing those in recent times. So I, he's he's surprised me with, with those things. All right, Jeff in Omaha, and we talked a little bit about this last week. He wants you to explain again the strategy behind moving your infielders in the shift once the batter has two strikes on them. I'll see you in Lawrence. Oh, good, Jeff. We'll see you down there. Yeah. So with two strikes, you know, obviously a lot of hitters make adjustments. Uh, so. Um, you know, they could be very, very pull heavy uh, with less than two strikes. Certainly in hitters counts, you know, they'd be a bit more, more likely to pull the baseball if they're a pull hitter. But with two strikes, there's certain guys that make an adjustment that, that you know, look to, to move the ball the other way. Um, so that's where we would move, um, you know, in those two strike counts. Or uh, at times, with, you know, we, we're playing the, the third baseman closer in on a bunt guy. And of course, until he gets to two strikes, and then we're giving him the bunt. If he wants to bunt and he bunts foul, it's obviously a strikeout. So we'll move, we'll move the third baseman off um, and over towards shortstop on a shift guy uh, when he gets to two strikes that way. So, um, and I will say we we did um, 
we do have more more data now in terms of our own pitchers um, this year because uh, obviously Mason hasn't had a whole lot of Division One innings going into it. Uh, Christo hasn't had a lot of Division One innings going into it, and Brett Sears really hasn't either. Um, so, so we've been able to kind of merge this this week. We felt like it was a good week to do that. Now that there's enough data, able to merge not only the batted ball data for the hitter, but also for what our pitchers' tendencies are. And so, felt like maybe except for one ball, uh, we were in the right spot just about every swing this weekend. There were a lot of balls hit right up the middle. The, the right. DC was right there to That's get right. it and covered and made a play. And for Rhett Stokes. Where he's kind of playing, that's an odd angle that he has to make to throw the ball yeah. back. It, it's tough on a natural playing surface because you've got you've got the transition to the dirt and the grass, and there's the ball's going to kind of take some some weird hops. It's a lot different when you're playing on, on artificial turf. Uh, you can play as deep as you want. You know you're going to get the the pretty much a good hop each time. So he's done a good job of handling some funky bounces out there. How is our surface? I know they resodded. Was that a year and a half ago? Has it taken pretty well? The service is amazing. I mean, they've, they've done an amazing job. Part of redoing the field uh, last fall was they laser graded the entire thing. So that means the dirt, you know, got, got evened out, the grass. The grass is as green as I've ever Beautiful. seen it for this time of year. I mean, it looks, it looks amazing. The grounds crew has done a really good job. Do other teams comment to you about it? Yeah, I mean they do. They I'm come sure in. They do. And, you know, I think they're shocked at how green the grass is at this point in time. So, um, but yeah, it's different, right? Because most every most every team uh, in the league is, has turf. So it is a little bit of an adjustment at times for teams coming in that they're used to playing on turf. Now they've got to play on natural surface. Um, but yeah, they they do make comments about how how nice it is. I know Rutgers is turf. I think Kansas is yep, turf. They're turf too. Yeah. Yep. Um, one first over the weekend for the team was the first home run from, and probably first of many for Case Anderson. Yeah, and it was a, a day where we got him back in the lineup. We faced two lefties. Not that he can't hit left-handed pitching, but we felt like we had some good right-handed bats in there uh, the first two days, but had the right-hander on, on, uh, on Sunday, put him in right field, um, and in the three-hole. And so, yeah, he hit a hanging breaking ball out to left center. The wind was, you know, helping a little bit, but yeah. that's the way his swing works is, is to that, that side of the field. Um, and you know, there's he's going to have a nice little niche there in this ballpark, especially on days where the wind's blowing. That south southwest wind with a left-handed hitter um, put a great swing on it. How long mm. into fall ball did it take you to realize this kid's pretty good? Not long. About one day. Yeah. yeah just seeing him take BP, his swing. He's just got a really sweet swing, um, and, and it, he has an advanced approach at the plate. He's not trying to pull the ball. Um, he he's. He, he crosses his feet over, so it allows him to um, keep his direction moving to the middle of the field. And he also kind of has a foot trigger that allows him to, at times, get out front but continue to keep his bat speed. So um, very advanced hitter. Didn't take us long uh, to, to realize that once he got here, and really before he got here with how well he hit against college pitching in the summer. <clears throat> Played outfield for you yeah. first time ever yesterday. He did, and he's been working out there. I mean, he's, he's getting, getting some reps over at first base as well. Um, he goes and takes reps in the outfield during batting practice. Played, played outfield in high school. Um, so we'll, we'll try to, you know, pick and, pick and choose our spots, right, when we face the tough right-handed pitching, um, that if we've got some right-handed hitters that are scuffling a little bit against the right-handed pitching, that we've got a guy that we can put out there and do that. And Bradford was sick this weekend oh. as well, so he was out for a couple of games there and, and not available, but, but Sanderson's more than capable. Give us an update on Caden's arm. Getting close, maybe? He's getting close. He played catch last week and, and threw uh, pregame in a couple of games last week. And um, I think he's getting close. Um, it, it's just kind of that trust factor on his end to, to go, okay, I can, I can throw and maybe deal with a little bit of pain. And also, you know, there is a bit of a risk involved as well with, um, you know, if he continued to, to push it, it could, it could injure himself a little bit further. So those are conversations he's had with his family. Um, I've had with him at length. Um, he really wants to get in there and play defense and, and help us that way. I think we're getting really close. Could be this week. Great. Fantastic. All right, keep those texts coming in. The phone lines are also open, 402-413-2400. That is our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. They are your trusted auto partner, 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. More with the coach coming up next.
Hi, I'm Tom Osborne, former football coach and co-founder of the Teammates Mentoring Program. And I'm Des Moines Adams, Husker Black Shirt and CEO of Teammates Mentor. We're recruiting teammates mentors and need caring adults to be in the lives of our students. Meeting with a student once a week at the school can make a positive impact in their life and have a ripple effect in our communities. Please join our team. Go to teammates.org today. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the trail taming 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks, making them America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. Introducing the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the 2024 North American Truck of the Year. This is the next generation of built for tough. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on a brand new 2023 F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Not much can be counted on these days, especially getting timely rains. However, having a TNL irrigation system gives you water on demand. This is an insurance policy you pay for once and cash in time and time again. Perfect for all irrigators, TNL irrigation systems don't require complicated, expensive, and dangerous high voltage electricity. They're driven continuously forward by hydrostatic drives. Take some uncertainty out of farming with an intuitive hydrostatic powered TNL system. Visit TLIRR.com to learn more. TNL, like no other. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. 
pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. It's our baseball show for the week. Huskers will be down in Lawrence, Kansas tomorrow night to take on the Jayhawks. Six o'clock, first pitch, our pregame at 5.30. Justin in the chat room for you, Coach. Any chance of making up the K-State game? Well, I, I I don't. It doesn't look doesn't look promising. Uh, there's just not there's not a, uh, a real good day in there that matches up for either one of us. And there, even though I think it would be beneficial for both teams from an RPI perspective, um, it just it doesn't do you a lot of favors having to play a five game week um, during your conference season. I think we do have one more of those, but you, um, you, you try to avoid that if you can. And um, I, I know that. You know, talking to uh, Coach Hughes there, there, he's not real interested in doing that, neither am I. Um, and the other part is, is, you know, our finals weeks don't match up either, so they, they can't take, they can't play games one week because of finals, and we can't play games a, a different week because of finals, so uh, midweek games at least. So it doesn't look like we're going to be able to make that one up, but at least we do have them one other time on our schedule. Brandon in Omaha on the text line. Speaking of pitching, Coach, we haven't seen much of Jackson Brockett lately. Is he okay? If we plan on making a deep run, wouldn't a guy like Brockett help down the stretch? He would, and I think you'll probably see him tomorrow at some point. So um, he's okay. healthy, doing fine. Um, it, it maybe fits a little bit into that profile we talked about with Walsh in terms of he's, he's started more often. Um, you know, we've had some other left-handers that we've gone to that have been hot. Um, Walsh has pitched well. Jalen Wordley's pitched well. We've talked about that at length, and obviously Kyle Perry's pitched well. So there's only, only really so many other innings to go around when it comes to to the lefties, at least. And so, um, but I think I have, I have a pretty good feeling that that we'll see him at some point tomorrow. Andrew on our text line, Coach, what did Sears do in the off season to improve from a plus five ERA reliever to a dominant Friday starter? What an amazing transformation! Curious as to what went into the improvement. Well, I think there's a, a few different things that you could point to. Number one is confidence. I think that that that's certainly um, when you have it, it's very very tangible. He has that presence out on the mound that he didn't necessarily always have last year. Um, but we also didn't help him uh, set him up for success either because he was, you know, a, a bullpen guy last year. Um, he had been a starter his whole career in college uh, up to that point, so it was something new for him. Um, and and so. I, we didn't do him any favors when it came to that. Now, he did go off in summer ball, and kind of that's where he started to regain his confidence, I think, um, with, with, his, with his starting pitching, because he did it at a very, very high level this summer, like a lot like what we've seen from him uh, this spring. Uh, so it started with that, and then coming back and just getting on the same page with Coach Childers about you know, his routine and those type of things. And he's a... He's a mature kid. He's a he's an older kid. He's his you know fifth year in college, and so he has a pretty good idea of what he's trying to get accomplished. And and I just think the combination of those things. And he's a very diligent worker when it comes to um, what he's doing when nobody's watching. I mean, it, it's it's his stretching routine. It's his his plyo ball routine. It's his routine that he's you know he's making sure that his his he can feel exactly what his body's doing. Um, and his mechanical progressions and those type of things. So you add all those together, and he has a very, really high level of talent. And we're also quite lucky that he decided not to sign a professional contract last summer because he would have had those opportunities there, wanted to spend one last final season um, you know, pitching for the Huskers, and so we couldn't be more grateful for that. Hopefully your younger pitchers are watching and taking notes. I think, yeah, I, I, there's no doubt. I mean, you see the best pitcher on our staff hands down and, and how diligent he is and some of the stuff that he does to take care of his body. Um, it's certainly a great example for the, for the younger guys. He pitched in the Northwoods, is that yes, right? he did. Well, do you have preferences where guys go in the offseason? I mean, kind of give us maybe your ranking, your order of that. Well, the Cape Cod is still number one in terms of the talent, right? Max like, was there a couple years ago, wasn't he? Yeah, Max was there a couple years ago, two years in a row, and he had over 300. So that, that's where you start to get on the, the scouts' radar. 
Um, but then the Northwoods, we send a lot of guys there because they play a ton of games. So if you need a, a guy that needs to get a lot of innings, you send them there. Uh, it's like a minor league schedule. I mean, they play five or six days a week there. Uh, there's a and lot of just like Wisconsin. Yeah, those, Wisconsin, Minnesota, yeah. Iowa. Um, yeah, those up, those up that way. And uh, great atmosphere too. I mean, they have big crowds. Like I said, I mean, it, it's like a minor league atmosphere for those guys. So they get a lot of really good experience. Uh, and whether it's a pitcher that just needs a needs a routine like Brett did. Uh, to go re regain some confidence. If it's a young pitcher that really just didn't pitch a whole lot for us that needs to go go get 50 innings, we could do that. Um, so there, there's a lot of different leagues around the country that we send guys to. Uh, Alaska, you know, that's where Christo mm -hmm. went and kind of found himself. And we've had a lot of success with pitchers out that way because uh, it's not a great place to hit. Just being out there and uh, the weather and just the ballparks and stuff, it, it's more pitcher friendly. Do you have somebody on staff that works on placing those guys? Yeah, so um, Gunnar Hellstrom is actually, uh, he's our, one of our grad assistants. He's been with us now for three years, and he's, he's kind of been in charge of that. And Connor Behrens, um, our director of program development, camp director, he, he is also, he's coached in summer ball too. So he's got a lot of connections. Those guys help out with that. Um, then we, we kind of collaborate on where we, you know, making sure we're on the same page with what each guy needs. And um, so, yeah, we have somebody definitely in, in charge of that. Vern in Omaha for you, Coach. Do you have any outside interaction with opposing coaches during a weekend series? I assume you know some of these coaches pretty well. Do you meet for dinner or anything like that? Outside interaction, outside the ballpark, I would no. say absolutely not. And not, I just not, um, I'm very respectful of all the guys in the league. I'm just not very close with, with most of them. Um, and there's a lot of new guys in the league as well, but I, I'm not interested in going to dinner with an opposing coach, you know, over the course of a weekend series. Very good. Uh, another text question coming in for you. Uh, Dennis says, Coach, when a player gets injured during a game like the shortstop, do you have guys uh, that have a second player for choice to replace them and move around? Do you kind of have that pre-planned out in pre-game? We do. We, we have it planned out pre-game, and it, it depends on uh, a lot of different circumstances, really. Um, who's available um, and, and those type of things, uh, you know, with Walsh, that adds into something a little different for him because he's a two-way guy. Is he going to pitch? Um, you know, and, and just kind of depends on the situation. So if, let's just say, for instance, our, our shortstop got hurt, um, we would probably bring someone off the bench. Dylan Huff would probably be that guy to play shortstop. Um, you know, it happened the other night against Creighton, um, you know, we ended up pinch hitting for Stoney and Overbeek moved over to first base. But part of that was because Ben Columbus has been kind of nicked up a little bit just with he had a tight hamstring and it just wasn't a cool a, night. It was a cool night yeah. and it wasn't a day that to get him in there. He's our number two catcher. So um, so we ended up having to get creative with that, sending Overbeek to first. And we've seen that over the course of the year too, right, where we've had games where we've had four different first basemen, five different second basemen, and, and some of those things. Very good. Contact 811 two days before you dig to protect your underground utilities and yourself. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. Ben in Crofton. Coach, what's the travel schedule look like when you have a midweek road game and then an East Coast road trip? So the, tra uh, the, the schedule uh, is we will get on the bus tomorrow and leave about 1230. Uh, take you, I guess, about three hours to get down there. Um, <clears throat> and we'll, we'll do everything uh, pregame once we get down there as far as hitting in the cages, hitting on the field, uh, all those types of things. And then we'll bus back you know, tomorrow night. So it'll be, it'll be a long day of travel. Um, and then what, what we'll do Thursday is we will, uh, we've got to wait until our very last student athlete is out of class. Uh, because we have a certain amount of class days that we can miss uh, for travel for for sports purposes uh, and we're actually going to charter this trip to Rutgers with the softball team because uh, they play them they play as yeah. well so it ends up working out well that way uh, saves budgets for both teams too because we can share a flight and uh, and we can fly you know straight into you know Piscataway I've always thought we could do more of that even if we're not at the same campus, but we're maybe in the same region. Right. We can just zip up, pick up the other team, and bring them on back. Get them home early. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, those, those charter flights certainly help because yeah. uh, we, we have a lot of, a lot of late-night flights because we've got to take the last flight out. Usually that gets us into Omaha about 10 o'clock, 10.30. 
usually doesn't get us back into Lincoln until after midnight. Yeah, late night coming back this way. Josh Overbeek looks like he put a couple good swings on the ball yesterday. I think Dylan Carey starting to swing. That bottom part of the order yeah. looks like it may be about ready to jump. Do you get that feeling? Yeah, and, and, and Beak, Beak struggled a little bit there, um, you know, putting together, you know, some barrels uh, for a little bit, and he did. He put together some good at-bats this weekend. He sparked us on Saturday, uh, the two-strike hit he, he in the big inning. He got us going there. Uh, he put some good swings on it. On He lined out uh, and had a couple knocks on Sunday. Hit a ball 110 miles an hour off the bat. So, yeah, he's starting to get a little more comfortable, uh, probably just a, a byproduct of getting his timing back a little bit better, you know, having been off for three weeks. It's, it's, it's an interesting case when you, when you have an injury like that. A lot of times when you first get back in there, you don't think much about it. You're just excited to be, to be playing. And so you can have a little bit of success early. But to have that sustained success, you've got to make sure that your, uh, your timing is right. And I think he's just been a little off, starting to get that back a little bit. Um, and, and Dylan started to be a little more consistent, took a good swing for us on Saturday. Um, and, you know, just to have the, like I said, the s sustained scoring chances each inning, you've got to have all those guys, you know, going at the same time. Very good. All right, 402-413-2400, the number if you want to fire off a text for us. It's time now for us to have our Nebraska Lottery trivia question for the week. We're playing for $100 in instant scratch tickets. Brett Sears earlier today named the Big Ten's Pitcher of the Week. Who was the last Husker to win that award? If you know the answer, fire off a text. Again, one winner per household for a season, so if you've already won, you're out tonight. But 402-413-2400, fire off the text. If you knew who the last Husker to win, the Big Ten Pitcher of the Week was. We'll tell you the answer next. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks, making them America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. Introducing the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the 2024 North American Truck of the Year. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on a brand new 2023 F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Husker fans, springtime in Sarpy County means sports and outdoor activities. Catch an Omaha Storm Chasers baseball game or a Union Omaha Pro soccer match at Werner Park. Visit Fontenelle Forest where you can enjoy tree rush adventures or hike and bike on one of the many trails. Play a round of golf or experience great fishing. Relax, refresh, and rediscover yourself with a springtime trip. Plan your adventure at GoSarpy.com. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks, making them America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. Introducing the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the 2024 North American Truck of the Year. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on a brand new 2023 F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! 
Right. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Hey, Mom. Yeah, I got in a crash. I'm okay. I was wearing my seatbelt. People count on you to buckle up. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Oscar fans, check out the all-new Hy-Vee Perks program. Sign up for the totally free Hy-Vee Perks program and enjoy exclusive perks pricing on hundreds of items in store and online. Score big savings today at hyvee.com slash perks. Welcome back to our baseball show, 402-413-2400. Phone lines, text lines open. We got a winner in our Nebraska Lottery trivia question. Who was the last Husker to be named prior to today as Big Ten Pitcher of the Week? It was Emmett Olson and Dillian in Omaha had the right answer. Emmett threw a jam at Michigan almost a year ago at this very time. Yeah, it was, it was Easter weekend, and he pitched great. I think he took a no-hitter maybe into the seventh. seventh or eighth inning. Yeah, and um, yeah, had a great year for us, fourth-round pick, and, and uh, playing pro ball now. He's got a shot, right? I mean, he's built pretty well to be a maybe yeah. a pro pitcher. Yeah, left-handed guys. They seem to you know have a long you know uh, leash there in pro professional baseball, and Emmett's got great stuff, and um, guy that's going to keep getting better and better, I think. Kate Bovich, by the way, was named the his league's pitcher of the week. He's been dominant in a couple of starts. I don't think it's long before he's in the big leagues. Yeah, I mean he's and he's in a great organization. I mean the Orioles are they're on the the up, you know for sure when it comes to the big leagues and the minor leagues and and what they're doing there. And and he's going to be a big part of that. And uh, I think he led all of minor league baseball in strikeouts last year. Uh, pretty impressive feat there. And um, I've been pretty. Outspoken about my uh, how I, I feel like Kate is is a ten year big leaguer. I think he's a guy that's going to stick around and pitch and uh, make a major major impact at the big league level. Matt Waldron had a good start for the Padres yesterday. Went five and a third, gave up three hits and a run. It was an under and run. Mike and Grand Island coach, I hate to even ask this, maybe he goes because he goes. I don't want to jinx anything, but we've kept our pitchers pretty healthy through the year. Are we doing anything different? No, no. Nope. It's just one of those things, right? I mean, it, it's just a. a uh, Guys, it's not a natural deal to, to throw baseball and to throw it as hard as some of these guys throw it. And you just kind of have to hope and pray at times that, that things go well when it comes to that stuff. And usually the years that you have things go well that way from that standpoint, um, those are the good years that you have, you know. And you've seen it across the country, right? It just takes one or two arms to go down and it can really wreck a season. And, um, you know, it's happened to us here in the past. And it's just it's kind of a little bit of luck of the draw. 
Um, you try to do everything you can to prevent it and take care of it. Sometimes it's just, I remember when Mark Pryor came up, you know, it was, he was said to have the perfect mechanics, yeah. right? And he had the perfect body to never break down. And, you know, he didn't last as long as he probably should have because he just, he just couldn't stay healthy. And your depth, you're not really overworking a lot of guys. You're pretty much able to pick and choose when guys come in. Yeah, and, you know, that's obviously you try to take care of them in terms of the stressful pitches that they do have to make and, and <clears throat> try not to let them stay out there for 25-plus pitches too often if you can, if you can uh, help it. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's some guys that have gone back-to-back -back days, um, but we, we try to pretty win rare. if we can. Yeah, pretty rare. One of the other guesses for our trivia was Chance Roach. He, was a fun, he had a fun season in Lincoln. He did, and he had. I, I want to say he was the Big Ten pitcher of the week. I think he might have. It been. was the weekend that we. I think it was a weekend that we clinched the conference. He had an amazing uh, outing against Indiana. I think you're right. It was yeah. like eight and a third, or eight and two thirds, or maybe even had a complete game. I, yeah. I can't recall, but he had a great season for us. Really big fan of Chance. Yeah, good kid. Good one year pickup. Uh, New Mexico State. New Mexico maybe? State transfer. Yeah, yep. where he was from. Dorothy Lynch, home style light and lean dressing, endless. Flavor abilities. All right, the Jayhawks tomorrow night. Kind of nice to have them back on the schedule, and they'll be here in a few weeks. Yeah, this is going to be a, a good, fun trip for our guys. Play against a, a quality opponent uh, in their ballpark, and and um, you know we're ready to to rebound from Sunday. And they'll be looking to rebound. They had a tough weekend, but they've got a good team. Um, I think it'll probably be a staff day for them. I think we'll see a bunch of different arms in that game, um, but they've got a lot of talent. I have a lot of respect for their coaching staff. So that's the midweek game, and then you'll head off to Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights coming off of a rough weekend. They were picked in the upper part of the league, and I think you really like the job Coach Owens has done there. I do, and I, their, their stats don't really match up with no. what their record is. I mean, they're one of the best hitting teams, fielding and pitching in, in the conference, and they just lost some, some late leads. I mean, I was watching Saturday's game, and um, they gave up a three-run homer late to to lose that one, and and um, kind of been part of some some weird games. Purdue is playing a lot better this year, and and uh, you know they went in and played well last week in, at at Rutgers. We talked tonight about a couple of pitchers that you would like to maybe get to see and get a little bit more work. Are there some guys you'd like to see get more abs that have just been hard to find spots for? <laughs> yeah, I think Bradford would be one, right? I mean, he's had only some pinch hitting. Um, scenarios it's not easy to come off the bench and pitch it he's done a nice job for us that way um, but I think if given the opportunity to get a few more starts in there I think he could, could provide some stuff for us um, you know like I said Dylan Huff's a guy that I think is a valuable piece of the puzzle Ben Columbus has been a bit nicked up but I think you know in order to keep Josh healthy and fresh and and, and those type of things we're going to need to pick our spots with with Lumbo uh, back there behind the plate um, you know and there's some other guys in there too I'm probably leaving out but um, for the most part, I mean, we've got a pretty solidified lineup now, and, um, you know, we can mix and match at times, too, with some of the matchups, lefts and rights. Yeah, you've not been afraid to pinch hit, particularly if somebody has a couple of bad ABs and yeah. this may not be their night to just roll it and get somebody else in there. Yeah, I mean, that's part of it. I think it helps uh, the, just y your sharpness is you know that you got to be on it. It's not – I don't want guys going into it feeling like they've got to – um, you know, get a hit every at bat. That's not the case. But if they're competitive and they have good team at bats um, and they're seeing the baseball well, um, you know, they're going to get their opportunities. It was, it was written about after the Saturday game that you got the, the team together mid game. We hadn't had a hit in the first four innings and then we exploded. Do we overdo those things or what? What are those conversations like? Sometimes, I guess, tough love. Sometimes maybe more encouragement. Yeah, it just depends on the situation, yeah. right? I'm willing to do both. Yeah. <laughs> I've been been part of a, a, both of those types of conversations and um, you know Saturday was more of a hey we've got his pitch count up we're starting to see some chinks in the armor when it comes to some things I mean, we've hit some balls hard uh, just stay the course and and um, he had we probably we were not prepared probably for the number of breaking balls that he landed for a strike because he, his his scout certainly did not say that. His video certainly did not say that. It's almost like he made an adjustment prior to this, the week that he faced us. The shape of the breaking ball is different. So he was landing it a lot more often against us. And so we needed to make that adjustment in game, probably a little quicker than through four innings. But just, you know, told the guys stay the course. Um, you know, that can be the, the message. Sometimes it's a challenge to just the hitters to, hey, let's go. We need to, we need to pick it up. We need to be more aggressive. We need to have, um, you know, more grit. Um, and sometimes for the team, it, if I feel like the dugout's dead, or and, and that's very rare with this group. These really? guys have been very, very spirited. Um, so, you know, I, I don't want to do it all the time. 
Uh, but I do think you can pick your spots when it comes to just having those messages throughout the game. This will be a tough one for you. W where is Kyle Perry more valuable? In the dugout as kind of the lead <laughs> cheerleader or what yeah. he's done on the mound? Well, to give you an idea of how valuable he is, we, we, we send him down to the pen at the very last possible moment that we think he might Because you want him right there. Because we want him in the dugout. Uh, because he is all over it when it comes to, to you know, getting behind his, his teammates. And, but certainly you can't uh, overstate how solid he's been for us out of the bullpen this year and how clutch he's been, how many big pitches he's made, um, how, how much a relentless strike thrower he's been this year. Um, he's been a, a huge, huge piece of the puzzle. I don't know. I mean, uh, this is a six-year. He could have left. You could have said, now nah, we need to move on. But the two side, I'm sure you're really glad that he's there. Yeah. I mean, this what he's given his team is invaluable. It is, and, and he he's here for his sixth year, but he has not been able to play much baseball. And that, that's True. the thing, that the carrot that keeps getting dangled out there for him is um, this fall was the first time I've ever seen him pitch in the fall. Wow. And, and the, year, the five years that I've been here. So he's never been healthy in the fall. He's never had a chance to go off and pitch in summer ball and get that experience to, to do that. So we're seeing a relatively inexperienced sixth-year player. I mean, it's hard to believe that, but he's had two elbow surgeries. And so I, I'm glad that he wanted to continue to play. He loves the Huskers. He loves being part of the team. And, uh, you know, he's been a great leader for us this year. The number of big outs is incredible what he's done so far this year. Folks, if problem gambling is burning up your money, there is a way out. Help is free and confidential for Nebraskans and their families. There's no judgment, just help. Visit lifeafterbet.com. All right, text lines, phone lines open, 402-413-2400. Back with our final segment with the coach next. Other irrigation companies are finally discovering what TNL Irrigation is known for decades. Continuous movement is the best way to irrigate. While they'll have you pay for complicated upgrades to get steady, even water application with their high voltage electric systems, all TNL Irrigation pivots and linears are propelled safely and smoothly by powerful hydrostatic drive. Continuous movement isn't new, it's the TNL standard. Don't get talked into a reinvented wheel. Pick the proven original. Call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com. TNL, like no other. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at nebraskachiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Did I forget something? No, just wanted to tell you I love you. Oh, don't forget to buckle up. Drive safe. I will. Love you too. Someone is counting on you to buckle up. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Not much can be counted on these days, especially getting timely rains. However, having a TNL irrigation system gives you water on demand. This is an insurance policy you pay for once and cash in time and time again. Perfect for all irrigators, TNL irrigation systems don't require complicated, expensive, and dangerous high voltage electricity. They're driven continuously forward by hydrostatic drives. Take some uncertainty out of farming with an intuitive hydrostatic powered TNL system. Visit TLIRR.com to learn more. TNL, like no other. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest. Premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Huskers will have four games this week. The midweek game is tomorrow night 
in Lawrence against the Jayhawks. Tyner Horn's going to get the ball for you to start the game tomorrow night. Yeah, he will, and he's he's had some experience doing that this year already, obviously, and uh, you know just. We'd love to see him just get off to a good start, regain some confidence, uh, and, and really just set the tone for us. Not going to ask him to go six innings tomorrow night. Just just treat it one inning at a time and then go get us off to a good start. So you're planning on multiple guys getting the ball? Yeah, we'll get, I'd like to see several guys in there. Um, and again, we're going to put guys in there that, that we think give us a good chance to win. We're, we're, we're going to plan to win. But I also think with this, one of the strengths of our staff is we have – a good number of guys that can go out there and get you three outs and, and have good stuff and move on to the next guy. Um, so hopefully we can eliminate a crooked number here or there by just asking a couple of different guys to go one inning. Um, you know, and uh, we'll, we'll start with Tyner and, and see what he can give us. Any big memories of your playing days in Lawrence? Well, the, the field is a lot better now yeah. than it was then. And boy, it was, uh, it was a natural surface back, <laughs> back in the day, and it was not one of the – I just remember the, the service being rock hard. Like, it was just not a fun one to be an infielder uh, on. So uh, they've done a nice job. They've had, had some upgrades to their ballpark. And, and um, I do think I had – and I wasn't playing or coaching, ironically. Uh, I was in the stands. I saw one of the furthest balls I've ever seen hit in my life. Alex Gordon hit a ball like 500 feet there at Kansas. It was freezing cold. Uh, one day it was the one year that I wasn't coaching. Uh, my wife was going to KU at the time. And – um, went down there and visited her and, and uh, watched him hit a, hit a bomb. Alex hitting a bomb, that's, that's rare. <laughs> yeah, it was he had 20-plus 20, 20 homers that year, I think. And, uh, man, it was uh, – I just – I can remember the sound that it made off the bat because nope, there wasn't a lot of offense that day. It was, it was really, really, really cold, and, and uh, he, he crushed it. Well, and you've had – even in the last week, you've had some really good days to pitch, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the game – with Ohio State, one of the nights was, the, I think it was Friday, the wind was yeah. blowing in. That's a good night to pitch. Yeah, and in those days, you have to throw strikes and you have to play defense because if you give them free bases, it, it just sets you up. I mean, you, you, you played the, the Friday night game as 3-0, to zero, um, and obviously Brett pitched incredibly well. Uh, but, yeah, those are nights that you can really attack the plate as a pitcher and you've, you feel like you're not going to get hurt because the, the wind is just really howling in. Tom and Hayes says, great job, Coach. Good luck against the Hawks. You're not allowed to lose in the state of Kansas. Go Big Red. And Kyle Perry is the definition of perseverance. That's a good word because yeah. he certainly, as you said, he certainly had to battle a lot of arm issues in yeah. his career. you got to have a good, good frame of mind, a good mindset, and a positive attitude to overcome a lot of stuff that he has. And you know, Kyle, you know that he loves, he loves to have a smile on his face. Yeah, no doubt. And then, then it's off to Rutgers. They got swept at home by Purdue. But my guess is knowing that staff, they're going to kind of rally and come at you pretty hard this weekend. Yeah, I'm, they, they still think they're a regional team, you know, so they're going to be fighting for their lives. I think they're a regional team as well. Like I said, I mean, they're statistically one of the best teams in the league. They have a lot of talent. They have really good coaching. Uh, they're they're going to be determined to to turn the page and and uh, you know try to fight their way back into the standings and um, so we need to make sure we're ready. They have gotten the short end of the stick a couple times in regional bids in the last few oh, years. Oh, for they sure, were, absolutely. You just had to watch them for a couple of innings and realize that's a regional team. I think it's kind of a disrespect the league still gets with some of the committees. Yeah, they they definitely got hosed a couple years ago. Um, had like close to forty wins yeah. and finished the top two or three in the league in the regular season and the tournament and and uh yeah that was a that was a tough one to swallow for the league and and um you know so we're trying to fix some of those things when it comes mm -hmm. to the perception of the league i think that will help um and you've seen the the rpis for a lot of the teams are a lot better this year sure are. all right travel safe a lot of road games good chance to go pick up some nice road wins and travel safe that's right appreciate it will bolt with us here tonight we'll be in lawrence tomorrow six o'clock first pitch against the jayhawks 5.30 for pregame coverage, and then it's off to the East Coast in Scataway, New Jersey for the Scarlet Knights. Woodhouse Auto Family, they are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Don't go away. We have another full hour sports highlight coming up next. We'll recap some of Matt Rule's press conference from Saturday. Talk about some news for Fred Hoiberg's Huskers. All that coming up next hour. Come on back.
Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. A few drinks at home after work, a couple of hits at a party with some friends, over-the-counter drugs for a minor illness, a new daily prescription, and you're not quite sure how it makes you feel. It doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If it impairs you, driving becomes deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Shop smarter online for your next vehicle with Buy Now from Woodhouse. Car buying 100% online from your local trusted auto partner. Easily compare hundreds of hand-picked safety inspected cars, trucks, and SUVs features, capabilities, and payments. Conveniently apply for financing and complete your paperwork for purchase 100% online anytime from anywhere. Plus, we'll deliver it to your driveway. Woodhouse, delivering a better way to car buy online with Buy Now.
Good evening. I'm Camden Cohn. Our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Earlier today, Husker pitcher Brett Sears was named Big Ten Pitcher of the Week. Sears improved to 7-0 with the complete game 10 strikeout performance against Ohio State on Friday. He's the first Big Ten Pitcher of the Week from Nebraska since Emmett Olson back on April 10th last year. Nebraska men's basketball got their first transfer of the season today in former North Dakota State forward Andrew Morgan. The 6'10 junior averaged 12.9 points and five rebounds a game this season. In national news, yesterday's telecast of the Iowa vs. South Carolina Women's Basketball Championship game on ABC shattered records. 18.7 million people tuned in with a peak of 24 million. The network said that it was the most watched basketball game since 2019, beating the ratings for every sporting event outside of football and the Olympics in that period. Sports ratings experts expect 17 to 18 million viewers tonight for the men's national championship between Purdue and UConn. UConn is looking for their sixth title and to become the first repeat national champion in college basketball since Florida back in 2007. Purdue, meanwhile, has never won a national championship and is appearing in their first title game since 1969. Tip-off is slated for 820 Central on TBS. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Hour 2 of Sports Nightly up next, right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium. It's Sports Nightly, all the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here comes the 3-2 pitch, lifted to right, and drifting over near the line is Williams, and looking up, and it is gone! Wind blows it right out of here, it's a grand slam for Will Walsh, it's 5-0 Big Red with Ravel as Andrew swings and lifts it. Right field and deep. Riono going back to the wall. It's gone! Home run, Billy Andrews! And that's the new record! She is the all-time home run queen at the University of Nebraska! Now the 2-2 from Sears. Breaking ball, swing and a miss! Strikeout number seven will end the eighth inning for Brett Sears, and he has gone eight innings here on a Saturday afternoon. The pitch from Chambers. Coke golfs one to center and deep. Going back Delgadillo, and it's gone! Three-run home run, Emerson Coke. Make it 5-2 Nebraska. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. We're back, hour number two, Sports Island here on a Monday night. Hope you enjoyed last hour. John in Omaha said, hey, having two sons that played college baseball, I just appreciate so much every time I hear Coach Bolt speak. He holds his players to a high standard but never loses the human element. I feel good that he's not only producing good baseball but helping produce good citizens. And what a brutal travel schedule this week. Go Big Red, John Omo. That, that's exactly right, John. You don't have to be around Will too often to just appreciate the kind of guy he is, and I think we're lucky to have him running the program. How you doing? How was your weekend? It was good. Went out to Bark in the Park. Boy, it was so windy. Oh. It was <laughs> miserable windy. But um, Saturday was the worst. Yeah. Hey, I'm loving the weather. I feel like we're on the upward yeah. trend. 80s this weekend. Yes. So yeah. it'd be nice. And so did Sunny enjoy the day? Sunny did, yes. There were quite a few pooches out there. There were. I didn't make it over to the baseball park of the park. I don't know if there, there was. There were quite a few. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, Kaylin Kenny's little, I think it was 11 week old chocolate lab was oh, out in the um, outfield. And boy, yeah, she and Sunny were, they were playing up a storm. Adorable. So, Sunny slept basically all day on Saturday afternoon. Wore out. Yes. Good. That's what that's for. I tell you what, I have really enjoyed the Final Fours. I thought them, particularly the Alabama UConn men's game was good, but I thought both the women's. The, the UConn-Iowa women's game on Friday, and then the championship game was a really good game last night. Camden gave you the rundown on the ratings. Uh, you know, and I'll step to, I'll, I'll take this, I didn't mean to do this right away, but I'm down this rabbit hole I'm going to go. You think about the Huskers beat Iowa once, pushed them to overtime a second time, and you just saw Iowa push South Carolina really to the brink. It kind of shows you that Nebraska's not that far off. Right, and even the first matchup, the score ended up a little bit, 
you know, uh, bigger than wait, what it is. Got away late. But they were they were competitive in the first half, so it wasn't like Iowa just completely blew them out. They faced off three times, and all three times were pretty competitive, especially the last two. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's exciting, and I think that was one thing I remember. It was um it was last year following the team did not make the NCAA tournament, and yeah. it was like four of the teams that made the Sweet 16, Nebraska had beaten. And I remember Jazz coming in here and saying that really irked them. It really motivated the, m motivated them because they saw teams that they co competed with and that ended up making runs in the NCAA tournament. We can do that. And so I think certainly seeing how they competed with Iowa, and it wasn't a fluke, the, the win here, because look no. what they did in the Big Ten tournament. Right. So um, Iowa's a team that, boy, they were, they were tough to match up with when they're hitting. And that first half yesterday was about as fun of a – half of basketball of any level that you'll watch it was really entertaining and then of course South Carolina started to pull away in the second half but yeah it's exciting for women's basketball all around that uh, what we saw throughout this last couple of weeks the the monster ratings and it's it's certainly good for the Husker program well, and, and you've said this for a while too I think you're getting more parity yes and that's kind of my point about that the Huskers who were not a ranked team all year long didn't get out of the first weekend but weren't that far off from a team that played for the national title. I think what has hurt that sport some is the dominance of a Tennessee or a UConn, UConn. where they just rattle off all these wins, and every game is 30-point difference. We're, not, we're getting away from that. Yeah, I can't remember who tweeted it, but I remember or put it out on social media yesterday. I saw it. I saw so many. Obviously, there was a lot of topics going on yesterday, but one of the things that someone said I found was so interesting was people were griping about how the UConn team was ruining – basketball but then they said but in turn it ended up pushing other programs to get better to get better yeah and so yes there was a stretch where it was bad but it ended up elevating the uh the rest of the field it used to be where for women's basketball if you just made the sweet 16 that was about like making the men's tournament right i mean there just wasn't as much parity beyond the top 16 teams and it was always chalk always chalk now we're starting to see some of those upsets some of those Teams that you expect to just, hey, cakewalk to the end, they don't. And the, yeah, the, the way that you're seeing now multiple good players, so not just a handful. I mean, look at this recruiting class that just ended up leaving the Caitlin Clarks, Paige Beckers, Angel Reese, uh, Carmela Cardoso was all in this recruiting class of like 2020. Is Mackenzie Holmes that one or not? I, uh, I think she's a year because that was, that was her fifth year, I believe. Yeah. But there, I think there was an Indiana player on there. But just the way that you're seeing those recruiting, um, the how many good players there are, and they're not all going to UConn, and they're not all going to Tennessee. They're they're spreading out, and so it's exciting for the game. It's it's grown tremendously, especially in the last five ten years. Yeah, and again, I think the parity makes that better. Yes, I really absolutely. Do. Dynasties are good in a way, but I think parity makes everybody feel like they have a shot. Well, hopefully we have a good men's game tonight. This is kind of the matchup a lot of people wanted. They kind of wanted Purdue and UConn to face off tonight. Let's hope we get a good one. It doesn't tip off. I, I do have a problem with this. It doesn't tip off for another hour and eight minutes. That's really, that's nine, almost 930 East Coast time, which is where a bulk of your population is. Those people are going to stay up till midnight to watch the end of that game. That's just too late. And why is that? Is it because, I don't, to me, if it's on the West Coast, West Coast time, 8.20, you still could, that's 6.20, you still could push it back to like 4.20. Right. Uh, it's just too late, too late. But that's, that's another rabbit hole. Let's talk men a little bit because another thing Cam that had in his ticker, good news today for Fred Hoiberg. I've been waiting for good news. You teased me the other day when the Jawan Gary and Bryce Williams, and by the way, I thought that was pretty cute how they did that. I thought, I thought that was so pretty, too. Let's run it back. Pretty clever clever thing for those guys to do so that was the good news and now Andrew Morgan North Dakota State he's a, a bison so he played with Sam Griesel a couple years ago 6'10 big guy and I, I, I was nervous about Andrew because he's from Minnesota the Gophers were in on him and he came Fred and a couple of the staffers went and visited him about a week ago he came right down to Lincoln like two days later and committed to Nebraska today 
a good get. This is kind of your Josiah Alec replacement, right? And I think uh, probably this coaching staff pulled out a little bit of a secret weapon in the recruiting process with Sam Griesel. Had to. And Sam Griesel actually posted on social media. I reached out to him to see if he could give us a little synopsis of, of what to expect. But yeah, the, this is that big body that you need to add. And he's 16. I actually saw a few of his highlights. He's also a guy that can step out and knock, knock down a, a three or two. So uh, here's another one of those versatile bigs that can probably do a lot of different things that fit into this offense. I mean, that's, I think we've seen now with Coach Hoiberg now a couple cycles in what fit not only culturally, but what with this offense and what works. And certainly those, those big guys that can do a lot of different things. Even as Josiah, we saw him score a little bit more down the stretch. But, you know, he came in and was a rebounding guy, a hustle guy. But we, we saw him do a lot of different things on the court. And so I think that's one of the things that, that certainly Fred Hoiberg looks for when he's adding some of these, these bigs is they got to be versatile to be able to do a lot of different things for this group. So we've been waiting for some positive news. We've got three bits of it in about four days. That's really good. The number that stuck out from Andrew that I like, 75% free throw shooter. Yeah. Those bigs get fouled a lot. That's great. Put him on the line. Let him earn the points there. And that was an area of significant improvement for this, this team year. this season. I think it went up like nine, eight Ten, or nine yeah, points. Right. Went from like the 60s to the mid to upper 70s. And so you saw the group improve. And there's a lot of times that free throws win basketball games. And so for a team to be able to knock it down from the free throw line, Bryce Williams... How big was he? He was Huge. clutch when he would go to the free throw line. It's just important. It's so important to be able to have that. So here's another guy that you add to a list of guys that have proven themselves at the free throw line. I mean, it, you can win or lose games at the free throw line. So no to doubt. have that for sure. Well, Husker Online is also reporting that Gavin Griffiths, who is a good freshman at Rutgers this year, is going to visit Lincoln this weekend. He's going to make his official visit here. He visited Providence this past weekend. He's getting interest from Illinois, Notre Dame, Virginia. Some other schools. Gavin was one of the top high school players in the country. He's a six. Jessica, he's a six-eight guard. Now, don't give me the Wilhelm Breidenbach because he does wear some goggles sometimes. But six-eight guard that can really shoot it from the outside. Again, another guy that fits what Coach Hoiberg likes to do. And a uh, element that is needed with the exodus of C.J. Wiltshire, sure. Casey Tomanaga, even Jamarcus Lawrence to an extent. I don't necessarily call him a knockdown shooter like the other two, but when you lose those outside threats like Casey and C.J., you've got to fill that void. It's so big in what this offense does, the pick and pop, the pick and rolls, uh, you know, but with rink mass and those shooters. So getting a guy that can play off of that pick pick and roll game with rink mass is huge. You gotta get a shooter. Gotta get a shooter. To me, it was one of the biggest priorities for this team this season. So, um, yeah, I, I, that'd be a big get. He's 6'8", and again, visited Providence coming to Lincoln this weekend. He was highly, highly, and I like the fact that he's just going to be a sophomore. You could have him for a couple of years. Yeah. I like that a lot. Where Andrew Morgan is is about to be a senior, so he would be a one and done. But that's what that's what Alec was, and and I think you. It's that's the same what, Griesel was. It's what you do it's what, anymore. Uh, Emmanuel Bandamel was. So it's, right. it just it's probably going to be a part of each, and you still have to manage those scholarships. So nope, you know yeah. if you've got a recruiting class coming in, it's just something you got to continue. So you might only have room for one scholarship moving, you know, to go move out and then to make room for the other ones coming in. We'll keep an eye on it. It's a busy time for Coach Hoiberg, that staff, as they're out trying, because they've got a bevy of scholarships left with the p departures that have happened within the program in the last two weeks. They've got, but you got to like the foundation that's getting built, and it started with Juwan and Bryce coming back. You, you were really confident the last couple weeks. You felt like both those guys were going to be back. And I still think Rink will end up being a Husker. I think Rink is too. I think he just might be exploring a little bit, but I think he's coming back. I think he, um, you know, he was hurt almost the entire year. He had the surgery, and then we heard Coach Hoiberg. He was a little bit um, hesitant to, to release some of the details, but then towards the end of the season, we, we did hear a little bit more, but he was not healthy. He was only about, and he wasn't practicing the entire time. They were, he was very limited in what he could do in between game days. So I think for him, you know, as good of a season as he had, I, I just, I think he only was scratching the surface because he wasn't fully healthy. So I think for Rink, in his mind, he probably wants to come back and see what he can do 
when he is fully healthy and then see how that sets him up because it's only going to set him up better for a professional career. So I think I, I think he will be back. I really do. I think he loves Lincoln. I think he loves playing in this basketball program. And I think probably he feels like unfinished business. Uh, but I, I really thought that trio, the only one that really shocked me was Jamarcus Lawrence. The rest of them, I, I kind of had a feeling we'd have a few names, quite a few names going the portal. I was not surprised by CJ. Eli didn't but surprise you? Not really. I mean, just with the day and age yeah. that it is, and, and maybe thinking as a young freshman that maybe he can find a better place where he can play more minutes. I don't know. But the really the, the one that hurt for me, the only one at this point, um, was, was Jamarcus. Well, I, maybe I'm reading too much into this, but the fact that Rink was in Phoenix rooting on k at the three-point contest... I gotta think that is a good sign. I right? think, I, yes, I, I just, I think he's coming back. I really do. I just think he might be figuring out some things and just exploring his options. But I think we'll, we'll, we'll hear. Uh, I'm running it back to video part two with uh, to go along with that big three. But how about Casey? Was that unbelievable or what? <laughs> it was absolutely electric. Looking at the clock, doing a spin, <laughs> shooting the ball at the end. Oh my gosh! I mean, it was so much fun. It's, I, it's. Hey, he just continues to. Here is a guy that probably had he played a couple games in the NCAA tournament, more people would have known even yeah. more about him. But here he is on a national stage, showing what he does best. You got a lot of love for that. Yes, he sure it was, did. It was fun. Yeah. All right, four zero two four one three twenty four hundred. The number if you want to be a part of the program. Matt Rural met with the media after Saturday. They did not end up scrimmaging Saturday. They're going to hold off until this. Saturday to have a full-blown scrimmage, but he had some great things to say about Bill Belichick's visit to Lincoln. Great comments. I want to be able to play those for you here tonight. So we'll get into that. And we have our weekend winners coming up at the end of the hour. So Camden, heads up. You better come up with a good weekend winner uh, for everything. All right. Uh, Hy-Vee. Husker fans, go check out the all-new Hy-Vee Perks program. Sign up for the totally free Hy-Vee Perks program and enjoy exclusive perks, pricing on hundreds of items in-store, and online. Score big savings today at hyvee.com slash perks. We're back with some comments from the head football coach next. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tamen 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Don't miss out on limited time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in store or online today because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1 4 through 124. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, see Lowe's.com for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
Hey, Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Things that impair you come in many different shapes and sizes. Some are the shape of beer and liquor bottles. Others look like cigarettes but aren't cigarettes at all. These are the things we know impair us, the things our parents warned us about. What we're not always aware of is our new prescription or the -the over-the-counter medicine we picked up just for allergies or a bad cold. See, it doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If you are impaired, driving is deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Woodhouse has been delivering you confidence in car buying since 1975. And now we're giving you the convenience of doing it 100% online with Buy Now. Anytime, from anywhere, you can compare hundreds of hand-picked, safety-inspected, free-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs that are available to purchase completely online. Shop smarter with personalized, estimated payments on all the inventory. Apply for financing and schedule your driveway delivery all online. Woodhouse, delivering a better way to car buy online with Buy Now. Other irrigation companies are finally discovering what TNL Irrigation is known for decades. Continuous movement is the best way to irrigate. While they'll have you pay for complicated upgrades to get steady, even water application with their high voltage electric systems, all TNL Irrigation pivots and linears are propelled safely and smoothly by powerful hydrostatic drive. Continuous movement isn't new, it's the TNL standard. Don't get talked into a reinvented wheel. Pick the proven original. Call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com. TNL, like no other. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you Monday night. Sports Highly here on the Huskers Radio Network. Just a quick programming note, no show tomorrow, baseball down in Lawrence, but full shows Wednesday, Thursday for you. So a lot, a lot of time this week to get and cover a lot of Husker sports. There has been... Another episode of Kicking Back with the Cooks. We'll play you part of that for on Wednesday night's program. I think it's out. Yes, it dropped today. Today. All right. So the full thing's out. We'll give you a snippet of that on Wednesday night. Well, Saturday, uh, Matt Rule met with the media, and that would have been at the end of week two of Husker Spring football practice. Now, they've raised some eyebrows with the creation of these three teams that they've come up with, the Bug Eaters, the Rattlesnakes, and I can't remember the third team. But he, he talked about why he decided to do this and what good he thinks they get out of having the three teams that they've broken them into. Yeah, just the idea was just, 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 you know, to play football, you know, I mean, so much of, you know, I watch, I watch, uh, you know, I I watch a lot of practices. I go around the country. I see people, you know, we, we all grew up playing sports all the time, you know, like our, our kids are growing up playing stuff on the video games and iPads and there's nothing wrong with that. That's just life. Right. So to me, um, you know, we have to do drills and we have to do team periods. We have to do all those things. We have to script things, but I want them to play. Um, how do you move from a position of like being a little bit doubtful and afraid of making a mistake to being confident? You play, right? You test your limits. You find out you can do more than you actually can do. So we just wanted to play. 
Um, we just want to be competitive. Um, in terms of anybody stepping up in terms of leadership, you know, I think we're, I think our leaders are pretty established. You know, the Isaac Giffords, Marquise Bufords, you know, Jamari Ty, Nat, like Nash and Terrence got into a fight today almost because Nash wanted to go in. I mean, I love that about Nash. Um, you know, th there's so many guys. I mean, just kind of our, our, our guys, our older veteran, I think they're doing a great job. And I think what they've, they've done a great job of, of accept accepting the young players and you know, orienting them to kind of how we do things. So no real surprises. Uh, I just think everyone's really moving along in a good direction. First of all, that's awesome about Nash. Hilarious. <laughs> Surprise you? No, um, <laughs> because, and Terrence had said that they were going to try to limit him a little bit coming off the wrestling season, but Nash kept just like sneaking in to get reps. But, you know, this competition thing, I've been out there a couple different times, well, three different practices now where they've had it, and it just, it raises the energy. They are fired up. They, you know, they just love to compete. And so I'm sure that has a little bit to do with Nash trying to run out there and help his help teams team. win, uh, you know, which apparently the uh, bug eaters won the third down derby, as I'm just seeing on social media being posted. But it just adds that element of competition and, um, you know, is actually watching practice with the big dog Jeremiah uh, the other day and he was talking about you know maybe one of the concerns was how do you get those reps with the ones and get that continuity with those ones but they don't do it the whole time they just break it up at the end of practice and so it's just a short amount yeah. of it which allows for these other guys to get opportunities and it allows to raise the competition during a time where you're not preparing for games so i think it's been a great addition justin in the chat room golden knights is the third team so thank you justin appreciate that yeah um terrence and, and nash that'd be, i'd kind of buy a ticket to see that if that, <laughs> that ended up having a little rumble between those two all right competition and you had some terrific interviews last week with the three quarterbacks Coach was asked, where do you assess them? Are they where you want them to be at this stage of things? Yeah, they're right on, they're right on track. Further ahead probably than I thought. Um, you know, there, there was a time, Steve, where I used to be like, hey, guys, don't worry about where you're on the depth chart. And I think I said this the other day, so forgive me. But don't worry about the depth chart. Just learn and grow. And fundamentally, that's what I believe. But if the players are obsessed with where they are, then I'm like, okay, well, then figure it out <laughs> go win like you know and, and we you know sometimes in the world now where everyone's like well why does this person get this why is it just worry about you be great at what you do we've never kept a bad we've never kept a great player on the bench we've never have um so uh i think all three quarterbacks what that's doing is one guy sees you know one guy sees a guy flip the protection and he says oh i'm gonna flip the protection it's just Players learn from players way more than they learn from coaches. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're one of the freshmen and you see the other freshman quarterback change the protection or adjust the route, then you're going to do it, right? And I think Glenn's doing a great job of fostering that and Sat's doing a great job of allowing it. And you see them, you know, taking things. Not, not everything's perfect, but we're definitely, definitely, definitely moving in a really accelerated pace. You know, we've heard a lot of the Satterfield and Glenn Thomas and even some of the guys that play on offense say that, that even though they're freshmen, they are a lot further ahead than what typical true freshmen are. It's funny, though, when I was talking to both of them, they were very honest, and they said it was going so fast. I mean, Dylan told me, he's like, it was like I was looking sideways. It was going every other way but what I felt like it should be going. And so I think those first couple of practices, they were certainly settling in. But then I... I just I think they're so mature and they're they've been so good and so elite that they know how to manage and hey learning how to watch the film and get better and and as we heard both of them say not make the same mistakes multiple times so I think they're they're learning so quickly that it allows for them to seem a lot further along than what you would expect them to be. They're both really mature for being yes. 18. Yeah, I mean you've had multiple conversations with Danny. I mean he just seems like he's yeah. been here for years. Yeah, it's like. Uh... Yeah, I, I love it. I think that's great. It's good confirmation to your coach, kind of say what we're kind of hearing back. I will say, I mean, again, we'll see. And they have to prove it on the field. But for me, I feel like this probably is the most talented quarterback room since I've been here. No doubt. No so doubt. 
I think those two freshmen are extremely talented, and then you've seen what Heinrich can mm -hmm. do. And I think he looks like the experienced guy out there. You, you cannot take away from having that Big Ten experience, and he's a leader, and we saw what he can do. So, so I think you got to feel good about the room, and it takes a room. We've seen it multiple years now, and to have multiple guys in that room. And so I think it's, a, it's certainly exciting when you have that kind of talent in the quarterback room. Everybody would be making a big mistake if they just dismiss Heinrich. He's not going to go down without a fight. No. And he's, like you said, he started five or six games in the Big Ten. That accounts for something. All right, a lot of recruits, a lot of high school coaches in over the weekend for the high school coaching convention, and we're going to get to the Belichick clip here in a minute. But a lot of guys have made visits during these practices, and Coach was asked, wouldn't you rather them come on a game day? And he said, not necessarily. This is an interesting answer. Yeah, and I, you know, very, you know, when I say this with the greatest of respect, it, it's our program. You know, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's all those alums' program. It's the high school coaches here in the state's program. It's the players' program. It's it's the university's program. It's the state's program. It's alumni everywhere. It's their program. And so, um, I'm just in, entrusted it for a short amount of time. I'm trying to do the best job that I can. And I know that you know what, um, someone will be here after me. And I want them to say, you know what, Matt left it in a good place. And so what I said to the coaches at the end of my session today was, I hope when they come to our clinic and when they see that we designed a logo just for the clinic or they walk and they see the signage or they taste the quality of the food or they listen to the quality of the presentations, I hope like all these little things they say, wow, everything, everything in this program is really intentional and everything's done at a really high level. And like Susan Ells is over there, like she, 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 like, like uh, Anthony Crispino, Keith Williams, former player who we elevated this year, Kiera Mayo, Jarrett with Sean. Um, if you don't think that they walked that those paths 50 times, if you don't think Cole and Martin were here this morning at 5 a.m. making sure that all the bulbs work, like it just, I want people to understand how intentional we try to do everything. Because if we're intentional about a clinic, if we're intentional about the spring league, if we fly in Big Ten refs just for a practice, then we're probably that intentional with the way we handle our young people's academics, their life skills, their community service, their careers. And that tells those high school coaches, hey, I can send my student athletes here. Um, I love coaches. So like, you know, sometimes, sometimes some of the high school coaches aren't used to seeing the head coach at the social. Um, sometimes they're not used to seeing the head coach walking around. You know, why, why wouldn't I? You know, I mean, I, I, lo I love people. I love coaching. I love being around high school coaches. Guys, we had high school coaches from Hawaii here. We had high school coaches from Maryland here, from Texas, from California, from Wyoming, from D the Dakota. I mean, we had people from all over, from Chicago. Um, you know, I don't know what the clinic was the year before we got here. It was about 300 and some last year. 800 to this year and we're going to be back up in the 12 and 1500s if we put together a good product but the product is representative of the way that we do things and so that hopefully tells people if i send my players to play at the university of nebraska no stone's going to be left unturned and i don't know about you guys that have kids isn't that what you want for your kids you don't want i mean our kids have to go figure things out on their own but we want like we want there to be a plan and and so we're not perfect but um we're certainly trying to be, and uh, that's that's the message at the clinic. You know, I show up at the clinic, and there's Coach Osborne. He's got a sport coat on this morning, and he's, you know, it's just all those things matter. They say that hey, this is important, and um, you know, you know, for Will Compton and the, and the bus, and you know, and Delaney and those guys, for them to come back and show off our facilities, it shows that it's important. So everything's intentional. Everything's done on purpose, and um, that's the message I want out there. Certainly, the message got out because there were so many. People there and that came and they can learn so much and, and the way that they open up their doors to be able to learn them and that only helps you in recruiting no doubt you know because you have all these high school coaches here and then you you build these relationships and then hey now they have got a kid and you can hit them up but hey you know and, and you have that relationship there it's just so important those with the way that recruiting is now it's it's those those previous relationships and and that trust factor there and if they're high school coach or they've gone through so much with through their high school careers is saying, hey, that's a good place. I've been there. I, I can speak personally. I know I trust them to do the best by you. I mean, it just certainly it's there's so many good things that come out of doing what they did. And I I just I, there were so many coaches out there and I know that they were enjoying themselves and, and the way that they were just opening it up and there were recruits out there and 
you had mentioned the the recruiting part of it. I saw one time where they said told one of the recruits, "Hey, come in here so you can hear and see what the drills are like." And so they just have opened it up to where you can really get a feel for what it's like in in this program. And there are just so many benefits to that. Attention to detail. Matt Rule is a CEO. He just everything he checks the box, and he trusts the people that he has around him, and that's a really really important thing. And let, let's let's be honest. No doubt, a lot of those coaches came because of the draw of Bill Belichick. I mean, this is maybe the greatest football coach of all time. All those Super Bowl rings with the New England Patriots just retired. Uh, well, I'm not sure if he retired, but he's no longer the coach of the Patriots uh, any longer. But he didn't just blow into town, make his little presentation for the high school coaches. He actually spent a lot of time with the Nebraska staff. This is a fascinating answer from Matt Rule about what they got out of Bill Belichick while he was in Lincoln. He is he he is so smart, has seen so much that he can make the complex so simple that it humbles you and embarrasses you. I was embarrassed yesterday listening to him. How smart he is! How simple it was. He went with what he how, how, we went. He went he went four and a half hours with just with the coaches. Forget the clinic. Like he came in and met with our coaching staff, and. Um, well, three and a half hours in, I was like, Coach, would you like a water, a cup of coffee? Would you like to use the restroom? Because I desperately had to use the restroom, you know? And he's like, I'm fine, Matt. I was like, yes, sir. Um, and just sitting there and just talking, right? And just his recall from things 15 years ago. And, you know, the only reason why we don't get through more information is because he's having to slow down to make sure you understand what he's saying. I mean, so you have this man who's a savant, right, who's been a defensive coordinator. He's been a special teams coordinator. He's coached, you know, he could, he could be an offensive coordinator. He's been a head coach twice. He's been um, a GM person. I mean, he's – and he's talking about football in a way that just, like, I mean, illuminates things and makes things so simple that you're like, oh, my goodness. And so um, it was an unbelievable experience to spend th that amount of time with him. Just you know, and I had a chance to coach against him at practice, so it's a, that affected a lot of what I did when I was at, you know in Carolina and he was in New England. But having that time yesterday, it, you know, maybe if he was coaching right now, he wouldn't have been so open with us. You know, maybe he's like, I don't want to get this out there, but um, he did it. And he's a great friend and really a really loyal man. You know, like you know, I got fired. He and Andy Reid were the were two of the first people that called me. Um, I was thinking about taking this job. He, he called me and was like, you know, hey, I, I really think Nebraska is a great place. Um, I got the job. He sent me a bottle of Dom Perignon, you know, and said, hey, congratulations. I asked him to come speak at the clinic. He says yes. His son takes a defensive coordinator job for Washington in our conference, you know, and Jed Fish has worked for him, great friends. He still comes. So just an unbelievable loyal guy. But the amount of football we learned yesterday as a staff, for anybody that was listening, um, you know, sometimes you get around someone like that and you try to impress them, like tell them what you do. Uh, I looked at people, anytime one of our guys on our staff started, I was looked at them like, bro, he doesn't care. He doesn't care what you do, what we do. He's teaching us. Let's just be really honest and open and listen. That's the same approach I've tried to take with Coach Solich, Coach Osborne, Coach Darlington. Just listen, learn, take what you can, build off of it. That's awesome. That's so cool to hear that he just like spent several hours of this coaching staff, whatever you want to know. Uh, I guess you didn't you didn't lock down that sit down interview. No, he slipped by me. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I, it would be so easy for a guy like Bill Belichick to say, "Yeah, I'll come speak at your coach's clinic and just do that." Fly in, talk to the high school coaches. Somebody give me the airport. I'm out of here. But no, he wanted to sit with the Nebraska coaches. And four hours later, goes, "Okay, I think we've got a few things across. I'm going to leave." That's awesome. Yeah, awesome. Really so, cool. Yeah. Hey, Woodhouse Auto Family, they are your trusted auto partner. Twenty brands, twenty convenient. Sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. 402-413-2400. We're back with more of the show coming up next. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. 
At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Shop smarter online for your next vehicle with Buy Now from Woodhouse. Car buying 100% online from your local trusted auto partner. Easily compare hundreds of hand-picked, safety-inspected cars, trucks, and SUVs features, capabilities, and payments. Conveniently apply for financing and complete your paperwork for purchase 100% online, anytime, from anywhere. Plus, we'll deliver it to your driveway. Woodhouse, delivering a better way to car buy online with Buy Now. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ, Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks, making them America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. Introducing the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the 2024 North American Truck of the Year. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on a brand new 2023 F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Hey, Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Not much can be counted on these days, especially getting timely rains. However, having a TNL irrigation system gives you water on demand. This is an insurance policy you pay for once and cash in time and time again. Perfect for all irrigators, TNL irrigation systems don't require complicated, expensive, and dangerous high voltage electricity. They're driven continuously forward by hydrostatic drives. Take some uncertainty out of farming with an intuitive hydrostatic powered TNL system. Visit TLIRR.com to learn more. TNL, like no other. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Sarpy County, where great food, drink, shopping, concerts, and fun await you. Stay, play, and plan your getaway at GoSarpy.com. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you. It is a Monday night, Sports Island here on the Oscars Radio Network. We're about 30 minutes from the tip 
of the national championship game between Purdue and UConn. Mark on our text line said, I agree with you guys on these championship games. Tonight's tip time is ridiculous. We need more start times like the women's final or the volleyball final, which were both in the middle of the afternoon. Play these games at a decent time or on the weekends when people don't have to work the next day. Not everything has to be in prime time. 100%. Mark, I totally agree with you. And I heard people yesterday complaining, why wasn't the women's in prime time? I think it was fine where it was. I did too. I, I had that same complaint asked me a couple times, and I think it's great to have an afternoon championship. I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. I liked having it in the middle of the day. You know, I, maybe some of the ABC pro programming, they don't want to move, but I, I, I didn't mind it at all. I, I thought it was fine, and he's right. You were in Tampa for the volleyball final. I think it was at 3 Eastern. It was in or, the afternoon as well. Yeah, middle of the afternoon uh, there. Doug in Norfolk, speaking of volleyball, says, um, haven't had much volleyball talk. I know it'll come up, but are there any rumors on John Cook's next big dream arena play? No, not that I've heard. Maybe, maybe they talk about it in kicking back with the Cooks, but I, I'm not hearing any smoke about something on the horizon. I don't know about um, the, I don't think the football stadium, but I, I've heard PBA mentioned a few times. Yeah, they may play something. And I think they were trying to play something in Vegas this spring, and that got didn't come through. So, and, and again, some of the conversations were being had with Trev Alberts, so now we'll, those conversations will switch to Troy Dannon. But I think, I think they, Coach Cook is, Kind of okay with allowing some certain op some opportunities with more fans to be able to see. Sure, you know. And, so and he gets pushed a lot about moving some matches to PBA. Yeah. But he loves the home court advantage they have. I get it. I understand his point. He they, will they're not. They're going to have home court advantage at PBA. The both <laughs> basketball teams do. You know who the volleyball team is? I I know. I mean, I don't think I cannot. He won't. I do not. Knowing him the way I do, I don't think I could ever see like the Wisconsin match getting pushed over there. I think he'll no. want that there. No. What, what if you play Texas there? But if, or maybe one of the non-conference matches or something, you know, I could see Stanford, that. Stanford, yeah. Texas, one of those big ones that come in, and yeah, it's a big match, but it's a non-con. Yeah. So I, I, I think he's probably more open to it than maybe he has, but I, I know that that has been talked about. I just I don't know if there's anything, you know, set there. in stone or really moving forward at full speed ahead. But I do know those conversations are being had. Hey, Woodhouse Auto Family, they are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We need to step aside, get our final break, and then we are back for our weekend winners. We'll do that next. Don't miss out on limited-time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in-store or online today because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1-4 through 124. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, see Lowe's.com for details. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks, making them America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. Introducing the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the 2024 North American Truck of the Year. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on a brand new 2023 F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today.
Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyset Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. We've reached the part of the program for our weekend winners. What's on your mind? What do you got? Uh, Cam, do you want to go first? Sure, I can go first. Um, my weekend winner, I'm going to go with former Husker pitcher Cade Povich. Povich was named Pitcher of the Week in the International League at the AAA level with the Baltimore Orioles affiliate. Um, through two starts, he's pitched 11 innings, only allowed three hits and one run with wow. 14 strikeouts and just three walks. So good start for him so far. He, he will be up soon. He'll be in the majors soon. Good I, one. I was making sure you didn't have mine, but I, I mean, I just, I've got to go with women's basketball sure. and the numbers. I mean, it is crazy. The, um, the, Games and competitions they beat, I mean, it drew more, a bigger audience than all but four college football games in 2023. Every World Series game since Game 7 of the 2019 World Series. Every NBA Finals game since Game 5 of 2017. Every Daytona 500 since 2006. Every Masters Final Round viewership since 2001. It's comparable to the college football playoff numbers. So the way that people tuned in and watched, and not just the championship game, but the Final Four, it just, it's so great for women's sports. We saw it both times that Nebraska played Iowa. They broke records yep. uh, in women's basketball. So it's just, it's great for the sport. Great for, it, it's, it's a ripple down effect. So it certainly is great for uh, Nebraska as well. But i uh, love to see it for this sport. Very cool. I'm kind of piggybacking off that. I'm going to go Big Ten hoops. Pretty cool that the Big Ten has... Had a representative yesterday in Iowa, the women's game, Purdue and the men's game tonight. Purdue first Final Four, final appearance for them since 1968. The Big Ten on the men's side have not won since Michigan State in 2000. Kind of do. I think they can win tonight. I don't think they do, but I think this ought to be a heck of a game tonight. I give them more than a puncher's chance to win this game. They're good. It's a good team. A team that Nebraska beat, by the way. Yeah, I think if it looked good, right, if Purdue wins. Yeah. I almost... I, I mean, my runner, I've got to say it, Casey Tominaga for his three-point performance. Oh, incredible, incredible. I needed, yeah. like, three different winners this weekend. Very cool. But I'm with you. I'm, I'm kind of pulling for Purdue, actually. I am, too. No, I am. I'm conference rooting and here. Are we going to chant Big Ten? No. Big Ten. Big means Ten. more. It just, it just means more, <laughs> that type of thing, and at the old SEC chant. Uh, so, yeah, should be should be a good game. Again, we're still 20, 25 minutes away from tip-off on that. Still time to tell you, though, that Husker fans, we want you to go check out the all-new Hy-Vee Perks program. Sign up for the totally free Hy-Vee Perks program and enjoy exclusive perks pricing on hundreds of items in store and online. Score big savings today at hyvee.com slash perks. Kicking back with the cooks is dropped. We'll play part of that for you Wednesday. You're working on your Wednesday women's podcast. What's this week? Oh, excellent interview. Jess Gardner. Uh, she's a local product um, and pole track vaulter. and field pole vaulter has built a significant brand for herself. It was an unbelievable conversation. I cannot wait for you guys to hear it. Fantastic. So we'll have part of that for you. It'll drop on Wednesday. We'll have part of that conversation on Wednesday night's show as well. So the rest of the week, baseball tomorrow. Weather looks good in Lawrence for the Huskers and the Jayhawks. First of two games, they'll play. The Hawks will come to Lincoln in a couple of weeks for the return match. And then we'll have full shows on Wednesday and Thursday. And as it sits right now, no show Friday. Uh, there is some rain in the forecast in Piscataway, but if, if it does get rained out, we'll probably have a best of for you on Friday night uh, as the Oscars venture back out on the road uh, for another conference road series. Woodhouse Auto Family, folks, they are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We're also talking about having a little internal masters competition. The interns, we'll get Cole involved. It should be fun. Oh, I love the masters. I'm so excited. Love this week. Yeah, love this week. So uh, that starts on Thursday. 
uh, see how that goes. I'll be watching a lot of golf over the weekend, so looking forward to that. Thanks to Camden for holding things down for us. I'll talk to you tomorrow night from Hoagland Ballpark in Lawrence. Have yourself a great night. Talk to you tomorrow. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Husker fans, springtime in Sarpy County means sports and outdoor activities. Catch an Omaha Storm Chasers baseball game or a Union Omaha Pro soccer match at Werner Park. Visit Fontenelle Forest where you can enjoy tree rush adventures or hike and bike on one of the many trails. Play a round of golf or experience great fishing. Relax, refresh, and rediscover yourself with a springtime trip. Plan your adventure at GoSarpy.com. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Hey mom. Yeah, I got in a crash. I'm okay. I was wearing my seatbelt. People count on you to buckle up. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy,